Welcome to the Sunday show. Um, yeah, you're seriously, thanks for coming out tonight. It's a Sunday, and, and wow, we, the whole room's full. It's amazing. Uh, it, I, mean, I mean, it's not that amazing just because we know who's taking the stage, and it's just going to be cool. And if you put your hands together, I'm sure Emer and friends will come on stage. Hello, hello. Thank you all so much for being here. And I'm glad it's not raining. I thought, we were, thought I was bringing the Irish weather as well as the Irish music, but it's nice to have a, a dry afternoon. Thanks so much for coming out. Um, I'm really excited to share the music from this album today and to get to perform it live um, because a lot of it was, well, it was all done in the studio, but it was sort of pieced together in different ways. So it's really fun to get to, to actually do it with all the people involved. And some of the people on the album only met today for the first time, so that's been fun as well. You won't be able to tell who, though, I promise. <laughs> but uh, the idea for the album started in 2020. Uh, I was somewhat exiled here for two years when I couldn't go home to County Clare. And so I started learning a lot of Clare tunes, and in particular, Clare tunes that are associated with fiddle players and composers of fiddle tunes from County Clare. And uh, I wanted to record them, but then, you know, COVID and the pandemic, and, and it was difficult to, to make that happen. So instead, I, I shot a little video series around St. Louis at different venues and monuments and things that had some connection to the tune, be it whether like the person that I learned it from, I, I heard it first at Focal Point or McGurk's or whatever, or there was something in the title that connected to, to the title of the tune. And, and then I really wanted to record them, but then the world reopened and the calendar started filling up and all of a sudden I was traveling here and there and then it didn't happen. So finally, this time last year, I bit the bullet and started recording them and started arranging them and revisiting some of them that I had sort of forgotten in the, the three year period. And uh, it, I, it was going great in January and February. And then, you know, St. Patrick's Day is always a busy time. So I started traveling and then I was traveling in the summer. And it turns out it's really hard to finish an album if you are on the road a lot. <laughs> it's really hard if you're over and back to Ireland multiple times a year. And so it was sort of looming over me for a while. And finally, um, funnily enough, on December 31st, I sent it to print. <laughs> so I'm really excited to be starting off 2024 with it finished. So I'm going to start with a couple of jigs that I learned from my brother. And uh, we love playing them together, although we don't get too many opportunities to do so. And they're both associated with a fiddle player named Scully Casey. He is sort of credited with writing one of them. And uh, in some parts of the country, um, one of them is played more of as a slide than as a jig, but I played them as two single jigs. And joining me on this track, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Alan Murray. Alan and I have been playing together for a number of years. He's no stranger to St. Louis. He's in and out of St. Louis all the time, playing at John D. McGurk's and various other establishments. Um, so you'll be seeing his face quite a bit today. Um, but we're going to start off with these single jigs. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you. Well, Alan plays uh, bazooki and guitar on the album, and somehow he was able to do it on the album, but he's not able to do it on stage, so um, he's still still working on that. Um, but I'm going to call out a great friend of mine, Dave McKinley Ward, who's going to play guitar on this next set of tunes. Woo! Uh, one of my favorite tra tracks is a track of um, a great fiddle player named Bobby Casey, who recorded two tunes that are kind of similar in feel, one called Tuttles and another called The Portole of the Kelp. And I wanted to compose a tune that was sort of paid homage to that or that was sort of in the same vein as it. And uh, during COVID again, this tune came to me one day and I thought it fit particularly well with Tuttles, which is the first one I'm going to play. Bobby didn't write Tuttles, but he renamed it for a friend of his. He, uh, he liked it so much, he decided to sort of lay claim to it by naming it after a friend of his named John Joe Tuttle. And then the second tune, the one that I composed, is called Hanging on Halliday, because Halliday was the street that I lived on, and I spent a lot of time on it for two years. <laughs> so I'm going to try these two reels. <clears throat>
Thank you. Well, this next song I learned from the singing of a great uh, duo named Ye Vagabonds. Uh, they recorded it. It was actually the, the title track of their album a couple of years ago. It's called The Hare's Lament, and it's a song about a hare who's unfairly hunted down for stealing some kale. And he's punished very severely for his crimes. And uh, I've been singing this song for a couple of years, and Dave and I recorded it last spring, and then we were working uh, on a couple of gigs last fall and we completely came up with a totally different arrangement for it which we liked much better but it was too late then so so what you're going to hear today is kind of a little mixture of both <laughs> um, that's, there's been a lot of that actually over the last couple of days finally getting to play the tunes with people um, some of them didn't get to record in studio at the same time so it's been fun kind of piecing it together and there's been a lot of like oh dang I wish we'd have done it that way but now you get the benefit of both. You get to hear it live and you can take it home and hear what it was like before. <laughs> so here's the, the Hare's Lament. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Um, that last tune is one that uh, I wrote a couple of years ago. Dave and I were messing around with the song and we wanted to put a tune afterwards and couldn't think of one, so I came up with that one. And that one is not on the album, so that's one of those kind of regret moments where we're like, oh, maybe we should have put that on it, but next one, you know? Um, we were playing around with it today. I think, I don't think it's really the tune that they wanted on the album, but Dave and Alan just like double zook in it, I think, you know? <laughs> Little zook soup up here. <laughs> That's the name of the band me and Alan have is <laughs> Zook Soup. Uh, but Dave and I are, oh, John, I think this went off. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Technical difficulties. This is great actually because Dave needs this time to tune, so this is filling this. <laughs> some magic words. Loose. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this next song that Dave and I are going to sing comes from County Armagh. And there was a, a very wealthy man named Dobbin who uh, gifted the city a um, big portion of land for recreational use at one point in time. And it was called Dobbin's Folly or, or Dobbin's Vale. Um, all of the land has since been built over with lots of housing estates. But um, the song progress. is... Yeah, <laughs> progress. But the song is still very beautiful. Um, it's called Dobbin's Flowery Vale. <clears throat> I was wondering how you were going to sing with that in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Pro tip, you need your mouth to sing.
There's going to be a brief pause while we swap a cable. Woohoo! Um, but it'll give me a chance to introduce the next person that's going to come on stage. Uh, he probably needs no introduction. I'm sure there's not one person in this room who doesn't know him. The infamous Kevin Buckley. Woo! Um, Kevin not only uh, plays guitar on the album, he also recorded it and uh, mixed it and, you know, was my sort of therapist through the whole <laughs> experience as well. <laughs> it's a very interesting thing recording an album and listening to yourself in extreme detail and hearing things that you didn't realize you ever did, like how pronounced your D's and T's are, and then how you explain that to someone and ask them to, to help you with it is also quite an experience. You know, it's like not being able to really put into words like sounds that you didn't know you could make with your mouth and be like, can you get rid of that <laughs> sound that's happening? Um, so Kevin, Kevin knows all of my most intimate sounds now. <laughs> I've heard them all. <laughs> and he knows how to remove them. <laughs> So we're going to continue on with a couple of reels. Uh, the first one was composed by Seamus Connolly, who's from Killaloo in County Clare, um, but has been living in Boston for years and years. Um, he was a, a professor there, and he's composed a number of tunes, but this one um, sort of has a, a, a nice kind of St. Louis connection too, because it's called 13 Arches. Uh, we only have one here, obviously, but it's much bigger than the 13 that he's talking about. Uh, there's a, a bridge in Killaloo that his uh, father used to, used to be... Um, um, some sort of a, a, sh a sailor, I think, and he used to um, sail under these uh, bridges that go uh, over the river, uh, the River Shannon. And the second tune is one of my all-time favorite tunes. Uh, it was composed by Bobby Casey, and it's called The Hairy-Chested Frog. <laughs> and I, when I first learned it, I thought it was about a frog that had a hairy chest, and I thought that was a great title. And then someone told me it was actually about a French person, like a hairy-chested French person, yeah. So I took them at their word and went with that for a while, but on closer inspection and some research, I found out that it's actually about the hair that breaks off near the end of your bow here, which this bit is called the frog. And so often you'll see fiddle players have bits of hair down there, so that is the hairy-chested frog. Yeah. I always feel a little bit disappointed that it's still not about a, a funny-looking frog with lots of chest hair. <laughs> 
close friend in County Clare who plays fiddle and she also presents a radio show on Clare FM. Her name's Trace McInerney and she composed a lovely jig, a lovely bright happy jig a couple of years ago and she called it Tune for Tom in memory of a, a man named Tom that she used to play with a lot and uh, I was messing around with a tune myself one day and um, I thought it paired really nicely with it and I decided to call it She's At It Again. And it's a little tribute to Helen Gannon, who's here today. <laughs> Woo. For the, maybe the one or two people in the audience who don't know Helen, Helen has been at the helm of St. Louis Irish Arts um, for 50 years. And St. Louis Irish Arts has been my home away from home since I moved to St. Louis. So um, this is a, a little thank you to her and a little thank you to the Irish Arts community with these jigs. And uh, I'm going to welcome Alan back on, who's going to... Uh, Zook it up on this as well. 
I don't know. I don't play the guitar or the bazooki, so I don't know which is more fun, double zook or guitar and zook. I don't know. It's all fun for me because it's just like a wall of sound coming at me from each ear. <laughs> a sandwich. A sandwich, yeah. <laughs> Let me check this hand. Yep. Um, I just want to make a note here about the uh, the album. Uh, I think what you're hearing tonight, <clears throat> when you get a chance to listen to the album, you'll, you'll, it's it's going to be very close. We did the uh, we did everything live basically, which is kind of a challenge to do and puts a lot of pressure on the featured artist, but I think you'll find out Emer rose to the occasion. So here we go. And if I didn't, you can blame Kevin because he recorded it. <laughs> I took care of everything. <laughs> All of the musicians on the album are musicians that I have the pleasure of playing with regularly in St. Louis, and uh, none more so than the next person that's going to join me here, Eileen Gannon on harp. And uh, yeah, Eileen and I have been playing together for many, many years. (laughs) 
And although it's very dark in the room, I can also kind of see a number of other musicians that could equally have been on it. So that'll be on round two, I suppose, you know. Um, but Eileen and I are going to do a couple of things together here. The first is a very old song. Uh, the lyrics um, are believed to have been written in the 18th century. And it's called Thamshe Mkola is not Dush Therme, which means I am asleep and do not wake me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the, the song is, it's an ashling, which means it's a, a vision or a dream song, wherein the poet um, is visited by this woman of ethereal beauty uh, called a spare van in the Irish language. And she visits him and she is trying to encourage him to wake up and to rally the troops to fight for Irish freedom. But he is pleading with her to stay asleep. And so the refrain throughout the, the song is Thom Shem Kola is not douche me. And he's pleading with her to stay asleep so he can keep, keep admiring her. So here we go. <laughs>
Thank you. Well, we're going to continue with a set of hornpipes that we have been favourites of ours for a while. Um, they're both compositions of Junior Crean, a great fiddle player from County Clare. And uh, the first one is called Ancoshlan Or, which means the golden castle. And the second one is called Her Lovely Hair Was Flowing Down Her Back. And he had two daughters, and depending on which one was in, either sh in earshot, he would either say, her lovely golden hair was flowing down her back, or her lovely black hair was folding, <laughs> flowing down her back. <laughs> <laughs> trying to come up with a, an, a name for the album I kind of had here and there in my mind but um, 
uh, it started with sort of thinking about like things that are in County Clare and things that are in St. Louis. So it was like, oh, the burn and the arch. And so it was like a sort of loosely like from the burn to the arch. And then Eileen and I were talking one day and we we're talking about the burn. And I was like, oh, you know, it's the largest karst landscape in Europe. And she was like, well, Missouri is also a karst landscape. And so she wanted to, me to call it from karst to karst. <laughs> She still thinks it's a good idea, but um, she, can, uh, she can go with that one herself. <laughs> um, during COVID, when I was doing a lot of online teaching, I was trying to find tunes that had a, a St. Louis connection as well. Um, to, um, it's, sometimes it's hard when you're teaching kids and you're teaching them about places or you're teaching them a tune that mentions a place and they have no connection to it at all, you know? So I was trying to, I was Googling like St. Louis and Missouri and different combinations of things. And I came across this little tune called the St. Louis Waltz. And there's only one known recording of it. And bizarrely, it was recorded in County Clare. <laughs> the year I was born by a bazooki player and a fiddle player. And the fiddle player, her name is Mary Custy. Her father, Frank, was my first music teacher. So it's like this very strange, yeah, connections. Um, so it's, a, it's a, a simple little tune that I started playing. And um, then the wonderful St. Louis String Collective, which was founded by Alyssa here next to me. And we're having a fundraiser last year. And I sent Alyssa and uh, Rania, who couldn't be here today. She's a great cello player. I sent them a recording of the waltz. And I was like, hey, how about you guys play on this with me? And we did it together. And I was like, we should record it. It sounded great. So... Um, Eileen is not playing the cello, but she's stepping in on the harp in Rania's absence. Um, so, yeah, please welcome Alyssa. Alyssa Avery. For Thank you. And here is the St. Louis Waltz. Thank you. 
And now, just when you thought we couldn't get any more strings on stage, we will. So we're going to have everybody come out, including um, someone you haven't seen yet, this lone chair over here in the corner. Um, the wonderful Dan Lowry is going to join us as well for this next song. And this song has been recorded by lots of different people, not just Irish singers, people from lots of different musical backgrounds and under a lot of different titles as well. And uh, it's one of my all-time favourite songs. It's a song written by a woman warning all other women off men because they're just going to go and break your heart. <laughs> and I realise I'm surrounded by them up here. <laughs> so we have a... Uh... Yep. Who's got the most accurate A? <laughs>
Well, we're going to do um, we're going to do one more track from the from the album. This is a, a little Irish song called "Tara Walyaru," which means "Go Home with You," and it's about a conversation between a father and a daughter. They're arguing back and forth about whether her match has been made or whether it hasn't, and uh, she doesn't agree with his choice because the person that he has found for her to marry plays the pipes, and uh, that, that's the primary reason she doesn't want to be subjected to a life of the pipes. So uh, they argue back and forth about whether her match has been made or whether it hasn't. And uh, I like to leave her with the, with the last word. And it's called, yeah, it's called Tara Walyaru. And um, seeing as we're all here, we're all going to play on it. So we'll see what happens with this. We're even going to allow in a non-stringed instrument into this one. <laughs> That's why we left him over there on the edge. <laughs> Moving and moving and shaking up here. <laughs>
Thank you all so much. Um, I should mention as well that on that particular track on the album, uh, a great friend of mine, Jackie O'Reilly, dances on it. Um, sadly, she couldn't be here today, but she is coming in for the St. Louis Tin Hole in April, so maybe we'll get to, to perform it with her then. Um, but we're going to finish up now with just a, a couple of sets of tunes. But before we do, I want to say a huge thank you to John on sound and to everybody here at Focal Point. <laughs> And a, a, a massive thank you to everybody up on stage here for um, not only playing on the album and being here today and uh, putting up with my um, frantic, panicked messages at times and other anxieties along the way. So I, I'm, I'm really thrilled with how it turned out. And uh, it's been such a treat to get to perform it here this afternoon. I'm so glad um, everybody could be here. So thank, thank you all so much for coming. Uh, we're going to leave you with a couple of sets of Claire tunes. Um, surprise, surprise. And uh, the first one is called The Humours of Ennis Diamond. And then a lovely jig called The Miscovered Mountain after that. And then maybe a couple of, couple of reels. It's getting very warm in here. Or is it just me that is feeling... I can see the windows fogging up in the back, and I'm like, okay, maybe it's not just me that's very warm. <laughs> so uh, we've had a few instrument changes and, and seat changes here, but we're going to try these jigs. Careful, Dave. <laughs> All right, act four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Like I said, we're, we're going to leave you with a, 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 set of, a set of reels from County Clare, uh, the Dunagore. 
the Otters Holt and the Boys of Tulla. And if anyone would like to take the album home after hearing it this evening, um, my fiance Dan is down there in the back, ready to ready to get them out of the house. <laughs> Um, but thank you all so much for coming. I hope you enjoy the rest of your, your Sunday and uh, hope to see you all again soon. Great. Put your hands together for Emer Arkins, ladies and gentlemen.